Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn more about printable vinyl. You can make the coolest and most colorful things with it. No layering or sublimation is needed. I put printable vinyl on my very first Cricut Explorer Air 2 over six years ago, and it still looks amazing, don't you think? So to show you how printable vinyl works, we're going to make these fun Squishmallow inspired animal stickers and t-shirts using Cricut's awesome print then cut feature in various types of printable vinyl. So follow me to the craft table and we'll get started. Have you ever wanted to take a specific design or a piece of art and put it on a shirt, but regular vinyl just won't cut it? Using printable vinyl with Cricut's print and cut feature makes this totally possible. This vinyl is great if you have a detailed image that you'd like to turn into stickers or even a t-shirt. You can use my adorable and free squishy animal designs to start. I just love this little owl. He might be my favorite. We'll test out different options for the stickers, including ways to protect your work. With some creative tweaking of certain settings, the Cricut makes perfectly cuttable multiple layers a snap. You just need a few important things to get started. It's really pretty easy, and I'm going to show you exactly how. First, of course, you need an inkjet printer. I'm using my HP Envy printer, but you can use any inkjet printer to print your designs. To make stickers, you'll need printable vinyl with an adhesive back. This type of vinyl comes in different options like glossy, matte, white, clear, and even this super pretty holographic. I'll also show you how to add a protective layer to your printed vinyl stickers by topping them with clear vinyl and then cutting both layers out together on your cutting machine. Now to make my adorable Squish You t-shirt, you'll also need some printable vinyl, but not the same kind that you use with your stickers. Instead, you'll need printable HTV. HTV stands for heat transfer vinyl. So it's like printable iron-on vinyl. This printable vinyl is different from printable iron-on transfer paper for white shirts. Look for iron-on transfers for dark shirts on the label and get the right kind. To apply printable HTV, you need a heat press like the Cricut Easy Press and a heat resistant pressing mat to finish. A Cricut Auto Press or a similar style clamshell heat press will work too. Even a household iron will do the trick. You'll also need some basic tools like a brayer, scissors, a lint roller, a ruler, and a spatula. Or instead of a ruler, you can use a t-shirt ruler to help you with placement. You can get some free at jennifermaker.com slash t-shirt ruler guide and make them right on your Cricut. And when you go there, you'll also find a list of recommended design sizes for various size shirts, which is super handy too. And finally, speaking of cutting machines, you can absolutely cut these out by hand but I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do it by using the print and then cut feature on a Cricut Maker 3. You can make print and then cut projects on any Cricut Maker or Explore series machines, just not the Cricut Joy as it does not have the print and then cut feature. So don't confuse those two. Maker or Explore though, totally fine. If you do use a Cricut, you'll also need a blue light grip machine mat as well. And there's just one more thing you need some awesome printable designs. So let me show you how to get my free Squish Animal design files and we will get started. Step one, get my free printable vinyl designs. Go to jennifermaker.com 487 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for number 487 and when you find it, click it to download the zip file. Unzip the file, then open the folder labeled PNG. I've included six cute animal designs and a fun group image that you can use for stickers, t-shirts, or anything else that you can think of. If you'd like to change the colors of the designs, you can use the SVG files and edit them right in Cricut Design Space. Or you can use the PDF designs if you want to print them out and cut them by hand. Before you start any print then cut project, I recommend you perform a calibration of your Cricut cutting machine using my helpful video over at jennifermaker.com calibration. This will ensure nice, accurate cuts. 
Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn the single animal designs into stickers and the group image into a t-shirt right in Cricut Design Space. Step two, prepare your design files. On your canvas, click upload and then upload image and browse. Click the first PNG in the folder and then click open. A select image type menu will appear along with a preview of the design on the left side of the screen. Select the complex option to preserve the colors and details. Choosing moderately complex or simple options can sometimes result in losing some of the colors in your design, so I don't recommend those. And then click continue. If you're using different files than mine, you can use the tools on the left to remove the background from your image if you like. My squishy animal designs have transparent backgrounds already, so that step isn't necessary. So just click apply and continue. Cricut Design Space will now show you two images. On the left is the outline of the image and on the right is the print then cut image. That's the one we want. So select that and click upload. Repeat this process for each of the files that you want that are in the PNG folder. When all the images that you want to use for your principal vinyl are uploaded, hold the shift key on your keyboard and select each one and then click add to canvas. Zoom out so you can see everything on your canvas. The designs will appear on your canvas at a much larger size than necessary because I created high resolution PNG files for you, which translates to a bigger image size on your canvas initially. So before we proceed, we need to resize these images. And this will be true for other PNG files that you might import if they're a high resolution, of course. So click on an empty space to deselect them. First, we'll resize the group image. Click it and drag it off to the side. I'll transfer my group image to an adult size medium shirt, so I keep the lock icon closed and change the width to 9 inches. But feel free to pick the best size for your project. If your shirt is bigger or smaller, you can resize your image a little bit up or down. You can make the individual animal designs any size you want. I'll start with the cat. Click the design and with the lock icon closed, enter the new size in the height box. I'll make it two inches tall. Click and drag it away over to the next group design. If you find the image is too small to click and move, click on an empty area to deselect it first and then click it again to drag it. Repeat these steps until all of the animals are resized, but save the unicorn for last. I'll size her a little bigger to keep her head the same size as the others, but to also account for her horn. Once they're all resized, click and drag them all back over to the left side of your canvas. Now you can click the plus sign to zoom back in and see them a little better. Look at how cute they are. <laughs> I actually think the group image makes a great sticker too, so let's right click on the image and select duplicate. And then while it's still selected, I'll change the size to three and a half inches wide. Click and drag it into an empty space so you can see all of your cute animal designs on the canvas. Now that you have your images resized, you can choose how you'd like them to be cut. If you want the Cricut to cut them right at the edges, they are all set and ready to go. But if you'd like to create a border for your stickers, we can add some empty space around them. Click on one of the stickers and click on offset at the top of your screen. Choose a rounded corner and drag the slider to adjust the border to your liking. I think 0.125 inches looks good, but you can use whatever you want and then click apply. A larger shape of the sticker called the offset will appear in back of it. In the layers menu, make sure that only the offset layer is selected and then choose a color for it. I'll make my offset white to help this cat really pop when it's stuck to a surface. Now we need to make sure the design and its offset print and cut together. To do this, drag a bounding box around both the image and the offset behind it and choose flatten. If you chose white for your offset, it might be hard to see, but I promise it's there. Repeat these steps to create the border for the single stickers. I'll leave the three and a half inch group sticker as is because it already has a pretty yellow background, but if you want to add a border, just follow the same steps. Flattening has another helpful role in principal vinyl. It's the easiest way to use an SVG with the material. 
So if you want to change the colors of one of the designs, it's super easy. Click upload and then upload image and browse and find the principal vinyl designs SVG folder. Click the animal you'd like to customize. I'll choose this cute hedgehog and then click open. You'll see the image appear on your screen as a cut image. Click upload and then select it and click add to canvas. Click and drag it off into an open space and then with the lock icon closed, resize the height to two inches. In the layers menu, you'll see your SVG animal design with its components underneath. Click on one of the components. I'll select his face, which is currently light purple. Then choose a color from the color menu. How about light orange? Do the same for the other components, changing each color to whatever you want. Have fun with it. I'll make his spikes darker orange, but I'll leave his cheeks rosy like they are. How cute is he? If you want to customize the colors in the group design, there's just one little difference. Upload the SVG and add it to your canvas. And then size it down to three and a half inches. Then right click on it and select ungroup. Now you can customize each component of the design. When you're done customizing the colors of the design, add an offset border if you like. And then select the whole thing and click flatten. Be sure to do this as using flatten will make it process as a print then cut image rather than a cut image. And now we're ready to print then cut. Step three, print then cut the principal vinyl stickers. Let's make our stickers first. Click on the t-shirt design and then click the eye to hide it for now. Check that the right machine is listed in the top corner and then click make it. Depending on the number of stickers you chose, their size and their size of their offsets, your stickers may print on one or two sheets. Your designs will appear on the mat with an extra border around them. These are called registration marks and your Cricut will use them to know where to cut the images. Make sure the correct material size is selected for each mat. My principal adhesive vinyl is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Click back on the first mat and then continue. On the make screen, click send to printer. In the pop-up, make sure the correct printer is selected. The add bleed setting is used to minimize the chances of the cut leaving extra space around the outside of your image. Leave it turned on. Now toggle on the Use System dialog setting. This setting will allow you to customize even more of your print settings to give you the best possible print. Click Print and a print dialog box will appear. It'll be probably behind your Cricut Design Space window, so you may need to minimize or move the window to see it. The print dialog window allows you to specify the tray that vinyl will print from, as well as the quality of the print job. Your options may look different than mine, but a good rule is to always select the highest quality setting possible for your print and cut projects. Each printer is different, and your system dialog box may look different than mine. If you run into any issues, consult your printer's manual for additional support. On the Cricut printable vinyl that I'm using, their front and back are clearly indicated. Yours might be different depending on the brand that you're using. So make sure you load your vinyl so it will print on the correct side. Now click print. Once printed, be sure to let it sit for a few minutes so the ink can dry completely. And then follow the same steps to print the second sheet, if you have one. I'll print a few copies of stickers so I can show you both ways to cut them, as well as how to apply a protective layer. Note that all of the cut settings I'll show you work well for both the white vinyl adhesive stickers as well as the holographic ones. Printable vinyl is water resistant and it holds ink well, but it can still be scratched and worn down over time. One trick for adding extra protection to the vinyl stickers is to apply clear vinyl over the prints before cutting them out. The clear vinyl will act as a laminate barrier and make your stickers last longer. If you printed your stickers on the holographic adhesive vinyl, I don't recommend using clear vinyl at all as it may dull the appearance of the really cool holographic material. So to apply the protective layer to your stickers, cut a piece of clear vinyl into a size that fits over your stickers, but not over the black registration marks. 
Covering the registration marks may cause your Cricut to not be able to cut your stickers correctly or not cut them at all, so be careful. Adhere a printed, uncut sheet of stickers to your machine mat. To apply the clear vinyl, pull back the top part of the backing paper and then align the vinyl to the top of the stickers below the registration mark line. Adhere the top edge and slowly pull the backer away from underneath the clear vinyl. I find it helpful to use a scraper tool to adhere the vinyl to the sheet as I pull off the paper backing. This helps to minimize the chance of any bubbles being trapped underneath. If you want to just cut the vinyl but leave the backing intact, let's make Kiss Cut stickers. It's the perfect method to keep your stickers all on one sheet until you're ready to use them. On the Make screen, select the mat that you want to cut first. If you didn't add the clear vinyl, click Browse on Materials and then type Printable into the search box. A list of cut settings for printable materials will appear. Select Printable Vinyl, then click Done, and be sure to select More Pressure. If you did add that extra protection, we need to customize our cut settings a bit. To do this, click Browse All Materials and then select Material Settings. Scroll way down until you find Printable Vinyl and click Edit. Now I'll drag the slider pressure to 250. If you can't get it to land right on 250, 249 is close enough. This setting worked really well for me, but you may need to test and adjust based on the brand of vinyl that you're using. Click Save and then scroll down to the bottom of the list and click Done. Now under Pressure, select More. Add the matching printed vinyl face up to your blue light grip machine mat, making sure it's perfectly aligned to match your screen. Adhere it well with your brayer, and with your fine point blade clean and in your clamp, load the mat into your Cricut and then press the flashing button to cut. When customizing your material settings, it's important to reset your custom setting when you're done or they'll be applied to your next project, something you don't necessarily want. To do this, click Browse All Materials and then select Material Settings. Scroll way down until you find Printable Vinyl and click Edit and then click the reset button. Now we need to weed our Kiss Cut stickers. With stickers, I find that it's easier to weed the sheet while it's still on the machine mat. Start in an upper corner and pull the extra vinyl down and across the sheet away from the cut stickers. Go slowly and make sure the adhesive back does not touch any of your stickers. Once your stickers are weeded, remove the sheet from the machine mat by turning the mat over and rolling it away from the stickers. If you want to make separate shareable stickers, try the die cut technique. This time we'll cut all the way through the vinyl and the backing. To make die cut stickers, a deeper cut is needed to cut through both the vinyl and the backer. If you didn't add the protective layer, in Cricut Design Space, click Browse All Materials and search for Light Cardstock. Then select Light Cardstock. Yes, I know, we're not cutting Light Cardstock, but the Cricut doesn't need to know that. <laughs> click Done, and then under Pressure, select More. If you did add the protective layer, you'll want to choose Heavy Cardstock instead. Same thing, give it some more pressure. Now add the sheet of vinyl to your blue light grip machine mat, adhere it well with your brayer, and load the mat and press the flashing button to begin. Once the cut is complete, don't remove the machine mat yet. Check to see if the stickers cut all the way through. If they didn't, press the middle button to send them through for another pass. Once they're cut, unload the mat and remove the stickers from the mat by turning it over and rolling the mat away from the stickers. Use your spatula to help remove any stickers if needed. I just love these squishy animal stickers. Aren't they just the cutest? Step four, print and cut the vinyl t-shirt design. Back on the canvas, use the eye icons to hide the stickers and reveal the t-shirt design. Make sure that it's the larger design, not the one that you use for a sticker. Now click make it. Change the material size if needed. My printable iron-on vinyl sheet is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And even though we're using iron-on vinyl, you do not need to mirror the design. And then click Continue. On the Make screen, click Send to Printer. 
In the pop-up, make sure the correct printer is selected and Add Bleed setting is turned on. Now toggle on the Use System dialog setting and click Print. Minimize or move your Design Space window to see the dialog window. If needed, pick the tray the vinyl will print from and then change the quality to photo paper or the best setting. Make sure the iron-on printable vinyl is loaded into your printer correctly too. Now iron-on vinyl usually has directions printed on the back of the material to show which side is front or back. If yours doesn't, be careful not to accidentally flip the sheet over. If you print to the wrong side, the ink may not dry and it may be a big mess. Now click print. Once the print is complete, let it sit for a few minutes while your ink dries. And then place the vinyl with the printed side up on your blue machine mat, adhering it well with your brayer. Back on your screen, click browse all materials and then type printable into the search box. Choose the cut setting called printable iron on dark. Click done and then select more pressure. This setting will kiss cut your decal, leaving the backing intact. Check that your fine point blade is clean and in your clamp and then load your mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to begin cutting. Your Cricut will look for the registration marks first and then cut the image. Now every machine is different, so you may need to test different settings before finding one that works correctly, especially if you're using a different brand of printable iron-on vinyl than I am. If you run into any issues cutting your materials, check out my Cricut tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut cutting problems. Before unloading your mat, peel back the vinyl from the corner of the sheet to check if the cut went all the way through the top. If not, press the middle button again for another pass. When it's done, unload your mat, remove the sheet of vinyl from the mat by flipping the mat over onto your work surface and rolling the mat away from the vinyl. Step five, apply the principal vinyl to your t-shirt. Now it's time to apply our principal iron-on vinyl design to our t-shirt. Printable iron-on vinyl is slightly different from standard iron-on vinyl. So I'll preheat my Cricut Easy Press to only 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius and get my pressing mat ready on my workspace. The Avery brand of Principle Iron Iron Vinyl I use for this project is recommended for 100% cotton or cotton poly blend shirts. My shirt is 100% cotton, but yours can be a blend if you like. The key is to use just enough heat and time to apply the design without overheating the shirt or the vinyl. To help with centering the decal on your t-shirt, fold your shirt in half lengthwise, lining up the sleeves and the sides. And then lay it on your pressing mat and lightly press it with your heat press for 5 to 10 seconds. And then return your press to the cradle. When you unfold your t-shirt, you'll see a crease down the middle, which will help you center your decal perfectly. And bonus, you've just preheated it, which is important for good adhesion of your vinyl. Now lay it back on the pressing mat and use a lint roller to remove any fuzz or loose fibers. Once the shirt is ready, place a t-shirt ruler on top, right below the seam, if you have one. If you need a t-shirt ruler, you can get them free at jennifermaker.com slash t-shirt ruler guide. Then gently remove the iron-on vinyl from its backer and place it print side up on your shirt using the guide for alignment. When the design is placed where you want it, cover it with the parchment paper included in the iron-on vinyl package. With your heat press still at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius, apply heat to the entire design with medium pressure for 30 seconds, and then return your press to the cradle. After heating, allow the design to cool, and then remove the parchment paper and check to make sure the design has adhered well to your t-shirt. If the design lifts in any area, replace the parchment paper and apply heat to those areas again for a few seconds. And your shirt is finished. Step six, show it off. I am so thrilled with how these turned out. Aren't these squishy little animals just so darling? And when you think of all the different things that you can do with your own stickers and t-shirt designs, there's no limit on what you can create. 
I think these came out so great. I love how printable vinyl makes it so easy to create custom stickers and shirt designs that are full of color and art that can't be replicated with regular vinyl. Think of all the things that you could make with these. Photo stickers, fun and unique labels, super neat custom t-shirts. You could even get your kids in on the fun and turn their artwork into stickers or a t-shirt that they can show off and show the world what they made. Now, while it's recommended that printable iron-on vinyl be heat applied to cotton or cotton poly blend fabrics, you know I love to experiment. I wanted to try applying the design to a Cricut Infusible Ink t-shirt blank that is 95% polyester and 2% spandex to see what happened. I pressed it using the same heat, time, and pressure settings as the cotton or the cotton poly blend shirts, which is 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds with medium pressure and it turned out great. This is totally another option to consider and don't we all love options? I know I do. And when it comes to caring for your printable heat transfer vinyl shirt, be sure to check the instructions that came with your printable vinyl pack for specific instructions but generally know that you'll want to wait at least 24 hours before washing. And then when you do wash it, be sure to turn it inside out and wash it in cold water. It's also important to use a full spin cycle so your t-shirt is not left soaking in water as that can totally affect the decal. If you ever iron your shirt, make sure you turn it inside out and iron it from the back side too. Never iron on the side with the, with the design or any vinyl decal for that matter. Now, if you have any questions about using printable vinyl, please let me know. You can leave your question below this video, or better yet, come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And please share your pictures too. I love to see what you make. I want to see all of your cute stickers and t-shirts and whatever else you make. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.